You're listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Giordano. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we've, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on Radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You are listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Giordano. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano, and it is Wednesday, humpity hump day, 2 15 23. <clears throat> COVID. Here we are in the middle of the week uh, looking for something to help us peek. What is going on near the moon? Looks like another balloon. <laughs> a guise all over poetry. Poetry in motion. That's what we're seeing. We are seeing the stories still going on with the balloons and the solenoids and the hectagons and the octagons and the pentagons and all the guns and everybody's gone. End of days. That's right. Oh, look at the shirt. It's freaking out. Don't stand, don't stand, don't stand so close to me. Don't stand, okay, don't stand or close, don't stand to me. How annoying am I right now? I think this is the first super chat of the night. Jammer travels, throwing down a $2. Greetings, the professor, the great one. Eh, you know, I, I like that. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. First super chat of the night, I think. You know, I'm going to take a peekaboo because sometimes people drop stuff before the show. Sometimes they drop in and I don't see it go at gush into the... Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, dee, 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 dee. I hope you guys are doing good. You know... I said I wasn't going to talk about this this morning because Amy was talking about it, you know, because she does her show in the morning. So she has to wait all day after all the day's events come out. So, you know, she's uh, that's like her third day talking about it, my third day, the third phase of moon's third day and so on. Um, I don't know how I can spend the entire I'm not going to spend the entire show tonight talking about this. I will play a few clips and what other people are saying again, because there's some updates and I don't want to be left out of the loop. B 
because somebody's going to ask me, hey, did you hear about this? And I'm going to be like, you know, I, I gave up. I gave up. I don't care. A lot of people are trying to make this into a UFO phenomenon. You know, it's not balloons. All right, so I didn't miss any supers. It's not, there's a balloon, maybe two, who knows, three, maybe they're all balloons. But people are now like, oh, you know, they're just saying that. And now, and now they're having problems locating the debris. And people are like, no, nah, no, nah, they got the debris already. They just don't want to tell us what it is because it's high. High, well, I don't know what the frig. It's top secret. I was going to say high secret. Hi, secret. How are you? Oh, good, good. Yeah. Jammer travels threw down a $2 super chat. All right, I'll tell him. Jammer travels. Good for you. Appreciate that first one of the night. Giddy up. All right. Uh, well, you know, roll call everybody. Stu Gerson. Sam O. Goofo. Brian. Sorry. Brian. Hey, Doma. Sam O'Goofonian Rockstar. Rebecca Wiles. How are you? You doing all right? How's your mom and them? Good? It's just something they say in the South. I'm picking up the slang. Hey, Brookers. Howdy doody, fresh and fruity. Speaking of, FAP's in the house. <laughs> what do you say, you bastard? How you doing? This morning was fun. He's giving me a hard time this morning. But I need that, man. You got to keep me on my toes. Hey, when you said it the first time, like you were ribbing me, like, hey, you're a bitch, rich, whatever, you know, I'm like, oh, no, I lost FAP. What did I say? What did I do? You know, and then I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to joke back and see what happens. And thank God. I mean, I, I thought you jumped ship or, or even worse. I don't want you to take yourself out, man. You know, I lead DJ here. Thanks, man. Welcome to the show. And I do too. I get extremely aroused when the intro starts. Look at me now. I got, you know, Glenn Collins. Welcome to the show. Diane Boss. Welcome to be Stu Gerson with the $1 super chat. It's Stu Gerson. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> nobody, nobody. Nobody would ever do a show like this. All right, let's calm down. Let's get mature in three, two, one. Mature mode on. Stu Gerson, biggest heart ever. Thank you very much. And a mucho gusto super dono to you, to me, to us. To hell with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so, Jackie Radford, hold on. Hold on. There you are. Jackie Radford's here. Teresa, Julio, how you doing, Teresa? Alfie Joe Bob, what do you say? How do you be, sir? Welcome to this show. Rebecca Wiles is here. How you doing, RW? Two letters that never go together as like TJ or TJ. Right? Hey, what do you say, RW? That's just too many sibil <laughs> syllables. All right, welcome to the show, though. Diamond Dog, Devil Dog, Dirty Diamonds. That's not nice. I didn't mean that. I was trying to be funny and it backfired. Welcome to the show. All right, let's get started. All right. What's up, Brian? Tim Freestone. Conundrum. Casual preparedness. Preparedness. I always had a problem with that word. Hey, David Wilcox. What do you say? How do you be, sir? And the den bub. Rich Ledfoot. <laughs> What's up, Ledfoot? Oh, that's perfect for Jaime. Tim Freestone. Commander Milarn. How you doing? What's up, Commander? Welcome to the show. Ben, the Yorkshire Gufonian. All right, now we can start. Welcome to the show, Ben. All right. Chris Rogers is here. Metalhead. Nathan. All right, I got, I got, I got to say hi to those people. Yeah. Uh, 
what is this my urethra what do they call this <laughs> what is this it hurts today ah oh, it's my thyroidicus strombatus it's from working out because i'm you know straining and i think i uh I don't know. I think I pushed a pebble up in my throat. Feels like something's going on. Ah, your mother's neck. Um, 96 live. We'll get to 144 tonight. Watch. Watch. You'll see. The numbers are starting to go back down. This story is just about over. Not, uh, yeah, this. That's why I made that thumbnail because people are, you know, saying interdimensional. I mean, every every option you could ever think of is coming out. What are these objects? Where do they come from? Why is the government hiding it? Why are there all of a sudden all these objects? Did NORAD really change the parameters of their radar filters? And that's why they now see all, I mean, they should be shooting down a lot of stuff then. So there's some very strange things that are going on all the while. A major catastrophe, earthquakes, three train derailments. I didn't even know about the other two. There's, this is crazy. And that's, what people are saying in mainstream media as well. They're saying, this is a distraction. I listened to, and thanks to, I think it was Dorothy who sent it, uh, Russell Brand. Somebody sent me the Russell Brand uh, show today about what he was thinking. And he really nailed it. And, uh, you know, I should play it, but I'm not. He, he said everything that I just said. And there really isn't much more we could say everybody's touching on every single piece they can get their hand on we haven't found the objects yeah we know where they landed they landed on frozen water and tough terrain but they can't find it for some reason and then you got people saying oh no it was they had it on a truck driving down the road no that wasn't that and then other people are saying no 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 it was a chinook they saw by the way we saw a chinook today now I can take that story to another level. I'm going to pull a, a fat Tony right now. And I'm going to make up a story. It followed us. It followed me. And it got maybe 600 feet above me. And I could have sworn they were going to propel down onto the roof of my car. That's how close that Chinook helicopter was to me today. I don't know what they were doing. And then a laser beam. I know you're not going to believe it, but it cut the car in half. Not the short way, the long way, including the motor. Yeah. And that spare tire. Still made it home. Eh, believe what you want. All right. Uh, but that's pretty much what's going on in this world. All that I just said. Everything. Let's get you started. Thank you for showing up tonight, newcomers and veterans and everybody else. Like, share, subscribe. And if you want to help support the show, hey, we, 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 we survived because of you. Super Chat, Super Sticker, PayPal, Cash App. You know the deal. All the links are in the show description and on the About section of Goof On on YouTube. All right. Okay. This is interesting now. This is real world news. U.S. intercepts four Russian warplanes near Alaska. So now you got to think, uh-oh. Why the balloons up there the other day? And, and now they're there, they're there, they're there. Is it posturing? Is that what they call it? They're posturing, postulate? No, not posturing. Uh, they're, they're flexing. They're, I don't know what they're doing over there, but uh, it's unbelievable. With all that's going on in that part of the world, with all the, you know, 
the balloons, whatever you want to call them. Russia decides to take four warplanes near Alaska. North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, said it detected four Russian aircraft, including TU-95 Bear, H-bombers, and SU-35 fighter aircraft entering and operating within the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone, the ADIZ, according to a Tuesday statement from the command. NORAD officials said they had anticipated the Russian activity and were able to quickly scramble two F-16 fighters to intercept the Kremlin aircraft in the ADIZ, which covers the international uh, airspace outside of the U.S. and Canada near the far northern state. Of Alaska. Um, the latest in, I mean, I don't, I just saw something that popped up and I had to get rid of it. It distracted me. The command noted that the incident is in no way related to the object shot down over the United States and Canada this month, and that Russian aircraft did not enter the two countries' uh, sovereign airspace. They were just close, which is... Yeah. NORAD routinely monitors foreign aircraft in the ADIZ and escorts them out as needed, with the last such occurrence happening in October. In that incident, two Russian bombers entered the airspace. Because such Russian activity happens so regularly, an average of uh, six to seven intercepts of Kremlin military aircraft in the ADIZ annually since 2007. So, you know, it is not seen as a threat, nor is the activity seen as provocative. But with all the tension in the air, it's a little suspicious. I mean, they remain high. You know, however, you know, due to Moscow's war in Ukraine, that is nearing the end of its first year, which is feels like it's been going on for five years. And three Russian warplanes were also in the skies near Polish airspace on Monday with two Dutch F-35s intercepting those. So the United States is also on high alert effect, high alert after it and Canada shot down three unidentified objects over Alaska, Lake Huron, and Canadian territory in the past week, in addition to the massive suspected Chinese spy balloon shot off the coast of South Carolina February 4th. So say what you want. The timing? Now, United States is, oh, yeah, well, we don't see it as a threat. Why? Now, why even talk about it then? You know, why even, I don't want to hear this. So what? The planes got a little close. So you see, they're trying to make shit more exotic than it really is. There's no reason to do this though. That's the whole thing. There's no reason to do what they're doing. That story that I just read shouldn't even really be that big of a story. I don't think it is. But eh, nonetheless, it's it's interesting anyway. All right. Bernie Miro throwing down two dollars. It's a super dono, folks. That means uh, a donation with no comment, no sticker. Bernie, continuing supporter of Goofon. Miro, love you, man. Mucho gusto, Janet. Also, Bernie. Thanks. Uh, yoga with Denise Ritchie. What is going on? Ooh, that was several minutes ago. I'm so sorry. Um, I hope I'm talking about what you were asking about. But this is what's going on. This is what's going on. Chris Rogers, how you doing? NORAD switched on all the seeing eye. Oh, switched on the all seeing. Right. Hey, you know, shouldn't psychics be predicting this stuff? Why aren't psychics coming out days before and said, you know, my, my angel, my spirit guide told me, actually, it's Uncle Vito. He said, hey, Jaime, hey, I'm playing Uncle Vito tonight. Shut off. Uncle Vito would be uh, telling me. As soon as I said that, hold on. 
it doesn't matter what Uncle Vito said. NORAD switched on the all-seeing eye. Where are the all-seeing eyeballs? Yeah, it makes me, that's why you can't really like trust a psychic or anybody who says they're psychic, even me. I say I do it. I do it for entertainment purposes. And quite frankly, I'm awfully good at it. I'm not. I'm up and down just like everybody else who fakes it. All right. Chris Rogers throwing down a five pound five quitter. Quid er was a super dono until you looked at it. Oh, don't even do that. Why'd you do that? Mm, it's not a super dono until I post it. You just blew my mind. Ma. Ma. I, I don't. Yeah. For Rogers. Chris. A dozen balls coming your way with meat. Chris Rogers throwing down a five pound five quid. Continuing supporter of Goof on. Very mind blowing. Super chat. You know, that is true, though. That's the weirdest thing, right? When when they say nothing happened until you looked at it. You didn't change it. The two, that's the, uh, the slit experiment, right? Isn't that what that is? They throw the, what is it, one ball into, there's like two slits, let's say, and it splits. Or it goes in this one, and then if you look at it, it comes out the other one. It's something like that. I don't know. But as soon as you look at it, it changes. See, I don't like that. That doesn't make any sense. What makes sense to me is when you looked at it, it was already in a pattern, per se, doing its thing anyway. So when you looked at it, yeah, you know, there's evidence saying that that that's not that's not true. That an object or whatever it is, let's say it's going through the right slit, and then there's recordings of that. I guess, Doc. Man, as soon as you looked at it, it went to the left. But if you're checking on all the stuff that happened on the right, let's say there's a hundred. The ball went into the right slit a hundred times in a row. There should be evidence of that. Like, but if you're monitoring it, that means you're looking at it. So you can't monitor something and say you're not watching it, even though you're not watching it with your own eye. Something is watching it, whether it be electronic or us. And I, hello? I think I just lost my ears. My I blew my mind. My ears fell. Yep, they fell out. Thank you, Chris. Best five five pounds ever. <laughs> Thank you, mucho gusto. Generoso. Hey, Terry. Terry Marwood, the richest YouTube channel. How are you folks doing this evening? Welcome to Goof On. Hey, Mike Demetria and Search and Destroy. Giddy up. Anomalies and the real deal is here. Nice, nice. Thank you very much for hanging out at Goofon for a little bit. I'll try to, uh, you know, look at any questions you may have. If you have a question, you can post it in all caps in the chat. I'll try to uh, watch everything, but it's not easy for me. You guys should know that. Foghorn Leghorn, what do you say to you? All right, back to the action. Oh, okay. So Sen Senate Ma uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, how do he says, how did we get into a, a position where the greatest nation in the world doesn't know what is traveling over our own, you know, our airspace? Now they're saying our sovereign airspace. Shut the front door. How long has the domain awareness gap that NORTHCOM Commander General Van, uh, Van Herc, is that? I can't. Has identified, existed. And what has the department done about it? The commander in chief owns the countries. Yeah, it is true. It is. Here, let's hear him. Mitch McConnell, yeah, yeah, I can. 
either way, I don't know. With or without them. And, Where is it? This is very odd. Hold on. That's not it. Huh. Ah. What is going on, man? Hold on, man. This is bizarre. It's not reading... My my uh, second monitor. I'm only getting one monitor popping up on the shares. Oh, here we go. Now it's uh, no. Wow, this is getting bizarre. Here it is. All right, it popped up. It popped up. But wow, that was so weird. Mitch McConnell. Um, I don't know what he says. Haven't listened. Now, on an entirely different matter, there's something unusual going It sounds like he has constant in indigestion. Indigestion. Uh, uh, oh, it seems like, you know, I, um, we're going down into the, the senior advisory board. <laughs> That's what he's like. Listen. What's going on in our nation's skies? <laughs> President Biden needs to communicate and level with the American people. Sorry. About Good two week. weeks ago, the American people learned that a Chinese spy balloon had crossed into our airspace and was taking its time surveilling our homeland. We watched it tour a big chunk of the country before the administration finally belatedly took it down. Since then, the public has seemingly heard about another new Unidentified. Oh my God, is he so boring? on a daily basis. <laughs> like... Yesterday, one of our F-16s shot down something they still have not identified near Lake Huron. The day before that, in <laughs> consultation with Canada, an American F-22 shot down something else over the Yukon. I hear you. The day before that, we took out something else over Alaska. The administration has still not been able to divulge any meaningful information about what was shot down. What in the world is going on? Has the Biden administration just dialed the sensitivity of our radars yes. all the way up? Yes. If so, what are these objects that we are just now noticing for the very first time? <laughs> are they benign science projects and wayward weather balloons or something more nefarious? that we've somehow been missing. This is him getting excited. Are they actually weather balloons? And uh, are they... I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm overthinking it. But, hey, you know, in a way, the guy's right. You know, we've talked about it through agnosium. Is that how you say that word? Agnosium? I hate that word. This time, President Biden owes the American people some answers. What are we shooting down? Where did they come from? What are Whether they? they are hostile or not, what is there they? coherent guidance about when to shoot them down? If the administration knew all along about China's surveillance efforts, why did it not have options to shoot that balloon down before it maneuvered itself all across the country? Exactly. Did the right people in the government know about this surveillance threat? Did OD and I and DOD not adequately share intelligence about the growing threat? How did we get into a position where the greatest nation in the world doesn't know what is traversing our own airspace? How long has the domain awareness gap that NORTHCOM Commander General Van Herrick has identified existed? And what has the department done about it? The commander in chief owes the country. An explanation. Man, that's a hard turtle to listen to. That shell is just covering his face. He can barely understand him anymore. Man, you know, uh, a lot of questions posed and we've been through this, but I just want to hear what other people are saying. We're going to talk about Ryan Graves a little tonight, too. Not anything major other than that he's lying. And I think I think we're right about this. 
about him not seeing, I don't like it that Ryan Graves is telling people, giving people mixed signals on whether he saw objects or didn't. And I'm going to play something from, uh, uh, something from Rumble, I believe it is. But not now, not now, in a minute. Uh, I almost forgot about talking about that. Um, all right. Uh, next, next. So I got uh, a strain today called bittersweet. I had it before. It is unreal. I'm so unbelievably uh, happy. Check it out. Enjoy. Take two seconds and think for yourself. What are we doing, everybody? What are they? I dedicate this song to all those balloons out there, folks. What are they? Smoke Why that are bowl. They? Why do, do we pee? pee? I just wanted to spice it up a little bit tonight. I felt like it, things were getting a little stale on this end, you know? And uh, I just had a little flashback, you know, hanging out with my family today at the racetrack. This is what it's like at my house. One, eight, Frank! It's disgusting, right? I'm sick. We just washed the hair. Oh, yeah. You know, I work on my hair a long time, and you, and you hit it. He hits my hair. Never touch the do anymore. All right. What are they? Alien girl has a tweet. Does she? No, Kevin. Kevin McDougal. Moonlick uh, says, look at UFO Twitter. This comes from Alien Girl. I was right the first time, and uh, it was uh, retweet, shared, and also communicated with Moonlicked here, saying, the laughter at this press conference is appalling and pathetic. I can't believe how dumb humanity is. The same excuse 75 years ago? A balloon? Oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's the worst. It doesn't get much worse. All right, I don't know what this is going on. I think they're laughing about the UFO talk. Go. Marion, medical food and other aid. And one last thing before I turn it over to the Admiral, I just wanted to make sure we address this from the White House. I know there have been questions and, and concerns about this, but there is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. <laughs> Alien girl's right. I don't, I just, I don't get the laughter. I honestly don't. I don't anymore. 30 years ago, maybe laughter, but not anymore. Not anymore. You know, that really does make me angry. I'm glad Amy brought this up is no again no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns again there is no indication of aliens or terrestrial activity with these recent takedowns wanted to make sure that the american people knew that all of you knew that uh, and it was important for us to say that from here because we've been hearing a lot about it um i, I i'm not I, i'm just you know i loved et the movie but I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, with that, with all seriousness. 
I love E.T. the movie. <laughs> you can hear that lady laughing in the background because she said two letters, E.T. <laughs> Probably Pelosi. That's how she farts now. Sounds like a chuckle. All right, now the Alaska object landed on frozen water. It's inexcusable that they aren't able to locate one piece of debris. Is that right? Oh, there's a video. Check this out. Okay. This is another video from a local there in Alaska on location as to where the, now they put this in there, where the UFO was shot down. It is a UFO, isn't it? Because we don't know what it is. The government's not telling us that. They said they don't know too, right? They just called it an object. This is the one that was shot down on February 10th. And he explains his proximity from the crash debris site in detail. So why aren't they finding anything? Okay, all right, I see. So, the wheels are spinning. You could take this any way you want to go. You know, that that's what's going to happen in the news. They're going to take this every which way possible. Corbell's going to have a corroborating video that doesn't corroborate. You know, he's going to say something like, we have got the most unbelievable UFO video, George. It is exactly what people are seeing over Alaska. You know that cylindrical object, George? This is what it is. Check this out. Getting crazy eyes. Corbell. That's what he's going to do. He's going to have something that's going to be similar, and then he's going to siphon, suck, and ride the coattails of what's been going on here. Now that it's dying out, I have a feeling there's going to be a legitimate sighting somewhere. See, and I also don't think this is the event that Jeremy Corbel was talking about, but it has to be because it happened right after he said it would. And I don't know. I don't know. I haven't checked on Jeremy yet. Jammer Travels, greatest song ever. This should be played every night. At one point it was, my friend. He's talking about the Crop Circle song from Greg Brown. It's a good song, man. We gave that guy a, a boost in his career. Well, and everybody else who helped, yeah. Thanks, Jammer Travels, for a continuing support of Goofon. That's right. Goofon is supported by the public. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, all right. All right. So check out, check out the thanks, Jammer Travels. Check out the video from Alaska. Nothing big. This comes from Think Tank on Twitter. I am as close as you can Did get on land to the location of the object that was shot down by the U.S. military on the north coast of Alaska. So this is all ice, actually. Sea ice right here. This is the Arctic Ocean. And uh, I'll show a little picture of the flight tracker of the C-130 that's doing burning circles out here over the ice, over what we presume is the location of this uh, object. I'll put that uh, on the screen so you guys can see it. And I'll put a little red dot for as close as uh, I can get to it and show you where I'm at. Um, obviously, this sea ice is pretty thick, so anything they shot down over there should be uh, recoverable. Uh, my coworkers have heard jets flying over and we've seen a Black Hawk helicopter fly out over the ice. So they're definitely out there somewhere. This is what it looks like. It's about 17 below and kind of cloudy, but they'll find whatever it is, I'm sure. Do you want to know something funny? When I saw that clip, <laughs> I saw it on my phone, right? And uh, I actually thought that... Uh, the thing that he was pointing at was an airplane, this, which is why I brought it up tonight. I thought he was showing us an airplane because <laughs> I, I saw this one on uh, 
my phone. Real small screen compared to that. Anyway, but still nice. Pretty snow. What's that? Jammer travels. Fake. I'm surprised they didn't reenact the Roswell photo, Den uh, David Wilcox says. The mothership's behind the, the moon? Hmm. It might be. That's not a stupid comment at all. That's actually probably true. <laughs> I never, FAP, how come I never thought about saying cornball? Or the bearded bullshitter, David Wilcox. <laughs> the bearded bullshitter, yeah. It's sad. I don't want to be mean. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't. But if you go back a few years, because let's, if you, just real quick, if you think about what Jeremy Corbell has given us, and let's say he never gave us anything except for maybe two videos. I'm talking about the ones he put out last year. If he stopped at Bokeh, you know, the, the pyramidal one, the green one. Um, if he would have stopped there and tried getting answers for the other things that were given to him, right? Because we ne there was never any follow-up to any of the sightings that he brought forward. Splash, splash. Everything came out that day, and that was it. There wasn't anything added to it. Everybody just guessed. Then the other video, the one uh, with the radar, uh, we got all these. These are the ones that were swarming the Russell, and, and then uh, they were just making these maneuvers. My God, the maneuvers. And then all we see is, you know, planes going 130 miles an hour to 250 miles an hour. Something that looked like a plane on radar. No fantastic maneuvers. Again, no follow-up. Nothing happened. Nothing came. We didn't get any answers. So everything Jeremy Corbell brings us, not only is it worse than third phase of Moon and anybody else out there, including Secure Team, it's worse than that. But the guys on mainstream media acting like he's an expert in the field because they're giving him that tag and he went with it and he's an investigative documentary journalist now he is he is you know um it's a joke the whole thing if you think about the jeremy corbel and george knapp that tandem did nothing for ufology but muddy the waters. And I can't see anybody telling me differently. Prove it to me. And I don't want to hear that excuse. Oh, we got the discussion, guys. We've been discussing it for 77 years. <laughs> I'm tired of talking. Well, Jeremy's giving you the evidence. No. He's not. <laughs> no, he's not. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad for ufology, what he's doing. I really think he's a disinfo agent. Yeah, I think he's a misinformation agent. I think he was sworn in. Got his badge. His... His pistol, his laser pistol. And he and George, uh, you know, consummated their friendship and uh, this is the result. Shannon Wilcox, for $10, it's a super sticker. Shannon Wilcox, this is your first super, I thought it was uh, David at first, because David, that's your first super chat. To goof on, thank you very much. That is huge, believe it or not, for uh, your first time. I appreciate that. And for the first timers, we give you one of these.
Thank you, Shannon Wilcox, for the $10 super sticker. A good. Yeah, that's right. Well, that was a weird one. Thank you, Shannon Wilcox. As we say, mucho gusto, generoso. I don't even know if that's right. Thank you for your support. And uh, we appreciate you um, giving the show a chance. Thank you. That was very nice. DJ808, Audio Viz. How you doing tonight, man? Good to see you. John John. What's up, John John Southern Exposure? And Michelle. How do you say? What do you be? Marco's here too. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to oh, Schneiky. Who's this? Oh, I thought, whoa. Well, that was weird. Hey, Jar Jar Banks. Thank you very much. A $10 super dono. A super dono is a, it's a donation with no sticker and no comment. It's just love. Thank you. Misa so happy. Jar Jar Binks. I know. Thank you. No, thank you. I did the voice for Jar Jar Binks. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I know. Nobody believes it. It's weird. Thank you, Jar Jar Binks. Misa no, you like it like that. <laughs> I can't do him anymore. I lost my I lost my edge. Thank you very much, Jar Jar Binks. That's a mucho gusto generoso and a continuing supporter of Goofon as well. Misa, mucho gusto happy. Hey, Chris Rogers throwing down a five pound five quitter says no evidence, no objects, Lion Ryan, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Agglish all over the way. No evidence. I got to say it like he wrote it. Five pound, five quid. You got to put all the effort in. No evidence. No objects. Lying and Ryan. That guns all over the lies. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm a, I'm a senior in a month. You realize that, right? I'm 50. I'm going to be 55. <laughs> Ma, poison ball me. Thank you, Chris Rogers. My mom lives uh, in the basement. It's beautiful. And uh, she makes meatballs for uh, all the friends. We, we mail them out all across the country. But um, what a great recipe. People have been trying to get that for 19, eight, 17 years now. Well, thanks, Chris Rogers, throwing it down. Mucho gusto, generoso, my friend. And I think there was another one that popped up. There it is, Denbub throwing down a $7 Canadian coiner. God, my nose is itching. Hey, Rish, hi me. I got some Yale. No, that's not why my nose itches, you bastard. Denbub, thank you very much for the Canadian $7. Yes, it is, Rish. <laughs> I appreciate the support, as always. A good friend of the show. Huge supporter. The Denbub. Amen. <laughs> I am so weird tonight. I'm telling you, this bittersweet stuff is unbelievable. I don't know. All right, let's get back to work, even though we are working. And I like what uh, that super chat was about. Um, whatever your name is, Chris Rogers. <laughs> no objects, Lion Ryan. No objects. So we haven't found, the only one that we know of is the Chinese balloon, the first one. Then after that, um, we haven't picked up any of the objects. Is that that's true, right? Not one of them has been picked up. I don't I find this very hard to believe. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I know what I said, but obviously I can't go faster than the information. Um, but I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to end this, but there's more and more and more lies and more conflicting and more hypocritical and uh Look, China is preparing for war. The signs are unmistakable, says experts. Oh, shit. I wonder if this... 
I wonder if we really do have a, like a major problem, not with UFOs, but, but with them. Um, they could drop toxins on us from above with these things. How long has this been going on? This is unreal. So maybe, hey, maybe uh, Coco didn't come, or it did come from China, but it maybe it originated here. They could have dropped it out of the sky, and 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 one of the vials could have hit the ground, floated around, you know, down uh, one of the rivers, and some wind. Next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire, black lungs, Texas cancer, dead in two weeks. Anyway, Chinese cargo plane just happened to be flying over the shot down object rough area. Chinese cargo plane just happens to be flying over the shot down object in the rough area. I guess that's what they mean. Wow, that's that's this is ballsy, but it's a this is crazy. It's a cargo plane. What's in that cargo plane? Hey, let's switch speeds a little bit. You want to see something interesting? International Space Station Live uh, from anonymous shadow on twitter an image capture you can see an object shaped uh, a lot like a horseshoe or the letter u the object was recorded at 60 frames a second and only appears in one frame. this is this is from the international space station not from the ground, not from me or you, but here it is. That's crazy. But nobody says why it's white and then why it's red. I guess it's, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the filters. <laughs> what is this? What is going on? Who are these IFOs? What is going on? If that's real, I've never seen this before. I don't know if I've, if any, this is new. That came out February 14th. So it was seen 12 hours before then or so. That's a weird one, right? I know. I know. I know. So, mm mm. So the you know they haven't found any of the objects yet or any of the debris. But they actually just said a few hours ago, John Ratcliffe says we may never recover any of the debris. As he tries to uh tamp down on conspiracies. Uh, sounds like the plane that went down in Shanksville, PA on 911, right? Remember that? Looked like a pre dug hole. Uh, hey, White House, you want to uh, tamp down on conspiracies? Stop feeding the public hard to believe stories like this. At this point, conspiracies aren't just. Theories. From Marie Kvilt. Stunning. It starts out. I like this. UFO debunker Mick West's rotating glare theory for the best known UAP video, The Gimbal, is based on a $200 consumer grade infrared camera with the smudged lens in a Ziploc bag. All true. Footage from the $3 million system that recorded the gimbal does not support his theories. Can you believe what Mick West did? That is just the craziest thing. 
how do you call yourself a debunker when you're not using the same technique as the original camera? You can't create something with Ziploc bags and smudging the lens. That's not the same thing. I don't appreciate that. But here it says, uh, I've written off my little FLIR camera as not being able to replicate the effect, but someone asked me to try it, uh, Mick West said. So I fiddled around with the smudge, with smudging the lens. Why would he do that? Then I thought back to the old experiment with a piece of glass in front of the lens. Normal glass blocks IR, but plastic does not. I had a Ziploc bag in front of me, so I put the camera in it and took it out to film the sun. Bingo. Holy shit. It is bingo. It's bingo, bango, bongo. He created it. That's the gimbal. What's on the next page? Oh, these are pictures of the uh, FLIR showing the effect of heat and what these objects look like with the FLIR camera. Wow, this is great. Look at all of these images here. You know, you can still see, see, but this is where the plane is close. I want to see the FLIR image of a plane 30 miles away. 25, 20, 15, 10, and 5, then 1. I want to see it at different altitudes. I want to see it, you know, in just different weather situations, different times of day or night. Um, there are so many tests that I can't do, and it's really frustrating. Balloon tests were easy and they were fun as hell and they worked like magic. But if I want to prove other things, you know, I know what Mick West is doing by smudging the lens and then putting it in a, in a smudging the lens creates uh, that effect that you see from the gimbal, the what may be the tentacles or appendages coming off the sides or corners and the Ziploc of course the Ziploc gives it that not so clear feeling unbelievable that he did this I mean it looks great but you can't do that Mick West that is what we call a hoaxer debunker and that doesn't jive well with me and it shouldn't it shouldn't with you either because that's not debunking at all that's creating something to get the debunk correct. And that's not debunking. That is, uh, you're trying, I applaud the effort, of course, but that's not real. So beware of Mick West. He's not as, uh, as good as I thought he was. He's good, smart, but he's not that bright. You know what I mean? He's too smart for his own good. Yeah, he's his worst enemy is what I'm saying. <laughs> so Think Tank, I don't know what's wrong with Think Tank. I, I bring these videos up from the Twitter feed because Think Tank gets a lot of stuff and I like it. And then he or she, whoever, will post a video like the one I'm about to show you. And it says, uh, captured by a Skylab tracker. This happened in Alaska on April 13th, 2021. Notice how the objects are met with other objects on their trajectory. So what he's saying is, look how the objects are interacting. And now I'll show you why that is so, so silly. There's a reason for it, but they're not interacting. This is called creating your own narrative out of a false i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't know it's false and now people who do this are are bad bad people bad for ufology they make it very confusing because what i'm about to show you is two objects from the, it's a balloon that got shot down or something it's deflated 
And it's obviously tethered together, these two pieces. And it's hard to see the tether, even though you can see it if you know how to look for it. But this person is saying that the object's falling and interacting and, and you know, like they're alive and doing a dance in the sky. It's just not true. And the sad thing is somebody's going to watch that and they're going to see an object in the sky that looks similar. They're going to record it and think they got something. And then they're going to go to their family and they're going to say it's a balloon. Then they're going to go to somebody on Twitter and they're going to say, that is unbelievable. I don't know what it is, but maybe you should send it to MUFON. So they send it to MUFON. MUFON loves it. Tells the guy, it's the most amazing thing we've seen in a long time. We're going to post this on the front page. Congratulations, you captured a UFO. Because it looks so good. And that's what I don't like about MUFON. They do that. And I don't know why. Because they do so much vetting. And then they let shit go by. Like how... How is it that you're vetting people like, you know, and having it impossible to see their video or making it uh, easy to see their video? And no words. I, I can't speak anymore. Obviously, something's wrong with me. I'm just going to play the video. I, just, I talk too much. I talk too much. And you never shut up. You talk too much. There's no video, there's no audio, there's no video. Duh. No video. Which way did it go, George? See? Oh, look at how they're interacting, Ethel. It's talking to the other one. Oh, look, it's getting in position. I think they're going to make little meatballs. Meatball balloons. Ma? Oh, you heard? What are these objects? <laughs> wow. Did you see how it interacted with those objects? I mean, they nearly high-fived each other, right? Watch. They have no idea. They're just going, they're doing the, going through the motions. They're not interacting. Anyway. Sometimes you got to make something more exciting than it really is. And that's what we have here. A failure. Ryan Graves, speaking of failures. I like Ryan. I do. I think he's okay. And you know what? When I watch him speak sometimes and he's answering some of these questions, it almost looks like he, he, um, he doesn't want to be there. Yeah, let's watch. This is from Red Pill USA Patriots. On Rumble. Is it Rumble? Rumble, yeah. Do this before bed to stop receding gums oh and decaying God, teeth before be it's too late. 25% of adults over 65 have lost off. all their teeth from decay. All it takes is seven seconds before it's going. Oh, you don't have to hear it. Oh, I can skip the ad. Brilliant tart tasting. Three other objects shot down over the weekend. Well, apparently, U.S. pilots. Oh, this is only three and a half minutes. How these objects were even being powered or staying in the air. So we seem to know nothing. Anyway, joining us now with reaction, a former Navy pilot. He previously encountered an unidentified flying objects. Uh, Ryan Graves is with us. Uh, Ryan, welcome to the program. Uh, I know NORAD is saying this, that it's a possibility. I don't doubt that it is a possibility. I've studied it. I've looked into it. I find it an interesting topic. I've not been convinced that, you know, life exists elsewhere or what these unidentified flying objects are. But you testified before Congress. Why don't you tell people what you said? Yeah, Sean, I think at the end of the day, I agree with you that uh, we really just don't have enough information right now to make an assessment either way of what we're looking at. 
What we do know is that there are things out there that are posing a aviation safety hazard, and now we're seeing that hazard demonstrated in real time in Alaska and Montana and elsewhere and across the United States. Okay, you testified. You're, you're a former FAA team pilot, and you said that 50 to 60 people that you flew with would tell you that they saw a UAP every single day, yet one of the pilots confirmed this publicly. But you're saying that this was something you often all talked about privately? Absolutely. We would fly our jets off the eastern seaboard uh, in our working areas with our F-18s. And once we upgraded our radars, we started noticing objects in our working areas that we weren't expecting to see. And we were all seeing these. We were seeing them on our radars. We were seeing them on our camera systems and our FLIR systems. And eventually, we even saw them with our eyeballs. Uh, it came to the point where we almost had a mid-air with one of these objects as we were entering our areas, which forced us to file a hazard report or a hazard rep uh, to report to the rest of the fleet that there was a, uh, a safety issue that we were experiencing out there. And the yeah. air crew that saw this object just described it as a dark gray or black cube inside of a clear sphere. Well, go into a little more specificity and detail what the type of things that you saw and 50 or 60 other pilots that you spoke to say they saw. Yes, when we were off the East Coast, typically how we'd see these objects behave uh, is stationary, uh, which isn't very exciting, but typically when we're operating at altitude, we could have winds anywhere from 60 knots up to 120 knots. What is and your altitude these you fly at? Operating, uh, what is we'll the altitude? operate anywhere from about 5,000 about 5, yeah. to 30,000 feet. Okay. And, and so, okay, there's so they would be stationary. quite high winds in these objects. God. Correct. And they would be stationary. Uh, against the wind uh, as if they weren't moving uh, when we're fighting to keep our aircraft in the area. Other times they would proceed in a straight line or in a holding pattern, uh, often at speeds up, up to a supersonic 1.0 Mach. And they would also be out there all day where our aircraft would typically only last for about uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes when we're flying tactically. These objects would be flying at high speeds for most of the day. Wow, amazing experience. First of all, thank you for your service. Thank you for sharing your story. And what did you our say? Our aircraft would typically only last for about uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes when we're flying tactically. These objects would be flying at high speeds for most of the day. Wow, amazing experience. First of all, thank you for your service. Thank you for sharing. I didn't hear anything in there that was uh, considered a possible lie. or that he was uh, misleading us into thinking he saw the objects? Because that's what I'm looking for. He didn't say that. He said, when we observed these objects on radar, this just came in to my news break. Evacuations ordered as collision with a train and a truck causes to spill nitric acid on an Arizona train and highway. Officials in Arizona issued evacuation and shelter in place orders Tuesday following a collision near Tucson that resulted in a truck hauling nitric acid to leak its load along the interstate. What is going on? I mean, I know that's not the same as what happened in Ohio, but it's the, 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 the driver of the truck died, it says. Wow. The state's public safety department said in a statement that the collision caused the truck hauling the hazardous material in a box trailer to roll over and leak its contents on the highway. <laughs> right? Why are we having derailments, collisions with trains? That sounds like that guy purposely ran into the train. To me. I don't even know how that happened. Doesn't say. Only that he probably lost, oh, he lost control, yeah. So weird. It's so weird what's going on, man. Atlantis is found has a clip here from uh, Senator Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio. I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to play it for you. 
because where is it you see why why has this happened to me here it is now i got it again but i oh i already pulled it up all right yep in seven six five this is regarding the ufos two one and go well balloons Tell the American people, should they be concerned? Should they be well, fearful? Well, objects. These... I don't think anybody needs to be concerned that something bad is going to happen to them today walking down the street from something overhead. I think what they should be concerned about is that their government has a process in place to analyze these things in a way that allows us to get closer to understanding what we're dealing with. And I'm concerned right now that that's not the process that's in place, that we've now created a brand new process headed by the... Uh, National Security Council, when we already have an existing process that's staffed with scientists and experts who have already collected on hundreds of previous incidents almost identical to this one and who could use this data from this incident to compare to those and begin to get us closer to answers about who's flying this stuff here and what is it doing here. Were you the, giving China, the China spy balloon, can you just talk about the, a lot of the payload was recovered? What can you talk how much are they learning? What do you want to tell? Wait, she just said a lot of the payload was recovered and how much are they learning? Is that true? Begin to get us closer to answers about who's flying this stuff here Listen. and what is it doing here. Were you the, giving China, the China details? spy balloon, can you just talk about the, a lot of the payload was recovered? Oh, the China spy balloon. Oh, okay. That was the only one that was recovered, right? Okay. I didn't hear her say China. China. I didn't hear it. Shame. I work on my hair for three hours and you hit it. Why you hit my hair? I work on my hair for three hours and he hits it. Why you gotta hit my hair? I know. I said I'm not gonna talk about this all night. I'm trying. I'm getting away from it now. Here we go. China's preparing for war. The signs are unmistakable. And check this out. This is scarier. And I'm not a fear mongerer. I was alive during the Cold War. I lived through that. And I'll live through this. This is scaring me a little bit, though. I'm not joking around. And, uh, I don't know. I'm not scared for me. I'm, I'm scared for you. China is preparing for war. Jenny. Yes, the signs are unmistakable. <gasps> so, for instance, at the Communist Party's 20th National Congress in October, Xi Jinping appointed what's called the War Cabinet. Of course, he's sponsoring the largest military buildup since the Second World War. He is trying to sanctions-proof his regime, and most ominously, he is mobilizing China's civilians for war. In July, a Chinese entrepreneur making medical products for the civilian sector told me that Communist Party officials came to him and ordered him to switch his production lines from civilian products to military products. There's been similar orders given to other manufacturers. As a matter of fact, the Communist Party is now operating factories once owned by private entrepreneurs because the private entrepreneurs said that they did not want to stick around for Xi Jinping's war. Why is China doing this? Why, why, what, what advantage do they gain by going to war? That's a great question. I think that part of it is Xi Jinping must be seeing a closing window of opportunity. But do you believe that China is... I just wanted to play that. Nothing really to talk about other than, you know, them. Uh, China has as many people in their army as we do American citizens. So they have over 300,000 in their army. One for each and every one of us here. Now, with that being said, let him try bringing it to the ground, baby. Because our guns, oh, no match, no match. We'll be popping out of foxhole covers, swinging out of the trees, building forts, wearing ghillie suits. We'll even have mirror mazes and everything else to have fun when it gets a little slow. Catch one of those POWs. Well, catch somebody, make them a POW. And then uh, do what the Mayans did. Tell them, go ahead, you can, no, go ahead, you can leave. 
and then just start shooting arrows, you know, on fire, just, you know, having them land around. Then you get some twist on a little explosive on the tip, like in uh, Rambo. Thunk. I know I'm holding it like this instead of like this. I get it. He didn't even hold his bow and arrow correctly. Hi, Andrea. Nice. You got your cowgirl hat on. I'm not saying this to be misogynist or a, or a slum, slime ball. I don't even know why I prefaced saying this. But I love women who wear cowboy hats. I, I think it's so sexy. Yeah, no, same thing works for women with the guys in the hat and all that. I get it. But yeah, cowgirls are A-OK. -okay. Actually, every, every woman is, but something a little special about that hat. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Daisy Dukes. The midriff showing. The whip. Tight pants. The chaps. Assless chaps. Uh, uh, Pierce Morgan. Uh, I think this is great. Let me tell you why. I'm going to play something some of you are going to hate it and a lot of you are going to love it. And you probably have seen this clip, but I have to play it. Another Pierce Morgan clip. It speaks for itself. And the reason I show these things, because believe it or not, this type of ideology, and I know, I know someone and a couple of people out there are going to say, what is he talking about? How does that interfere with UFOs? It does this way of thinking. Here, just watch. I can't, I can't. It's in it. They bring it to ufology and it dummies to everything down. It's just a, 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 a way people think. You don't get an opinion on whether Madonna is telling her truth or not. Is That's her truth. Way. Did you hear what the first thing he said? You don't get an opinion. You don't get an opinion on what madonna's doing with her private life like what you don't get an opinion on whether madonna is telling her truth or not oh you don't you don't get an opinion on whether or not madonna is telling her truth or not yeah yeah you do see that's that's the main reason why i, I brought this clip on they don't want us to have an opinion in ufology opinion that goes against theirs Whatever that may be, the narrative at the day, at this day, at the any day. Oh, that's is it, her. Is truth. What is her truth? That people are being misogynistic towards her, hang and that a woman over right, forty-five just, is not allowed or permitted to be sexy sorry, there is, in the eyes Jeff, of people like you. There is Morgan. only there is only the truth. There's not people's versions of it. We're not on the Meghan and Harry podcast, right? <laughs> so you can't just say her truth. No, there are facts. The fact is, she's done stuff to her face surgically which means when she goes out now, we all shriek in horror. No, women I'm are good. allowed to not like you, Piers. Absolutely and that fine. that doesn't give you permission not to a then problem. attack them. James, of millions of people. not a problem at all. She can... But, it, but he just said it's okay for them to not like him, but Pierce cannot like them? Oh, Pierce, it's okay if people want to not like you. Well, that's what Pierce is doing about this shit. It is so weird... It's bizarro world. It really is. I hate my guts. It doesn't mean I can't pass comment on her without being called immediately misogynist. But is right. anyone discussing how you look? And would all you the be time. okay with that? Literally, I get fat shamed all the time, even though, as you can see, I'm basically emaciated. You know why? Because I'm not <laughs> fat shamed. I actually think it's good. And Madonna needs to listen to proper friends who say to her, what the hell are you doing to your face, love? Right? Yeah. Look at that. You don't get... Madonna's friends. Poor, poor thing. If that picture is real, I think it is. Madonna was never good looking. At least in my eyes, she wasn't. She wasn't even a good dancer. She was just some chick who sang a song. Like a virgin and and rolled around on a bed and made it about her father. I mean, she she did it right. Good for her. Madonna was awesome. I'm so glad I grew up watching all that. Seeing her on MTV and all the rock bands and all the other bands at the time. And 
It was so much fun when MTV was new. I have to admit, that was probably the best, some of the best years of my life. Um, from the point of when M MTV what, came out in 1981, I believe. And uh, I, uh, things were pretty good back then. America was strong. I know I, from what my parents told me, though, interest rates were really high for homes. Back then, it was like 14% in the 80s. 18% on a home. Anyway, um, such a different day and age. Now, a video, there's no premiere, world premiere videos. Nobody rushes home. You record it if you miss it. There, there's a, it's just totally different. Uh, what, what was Monday? Monday was, um, they put a new video out every Monday. A new video from a, from one of your favorite bands. They Yeah, it was, uh, I can't remember the name of it. And then we had that other one. We voted on it. And Motley Crue has the number one most voted song ever in the history of MTV. They had to stop that, uh, that little thing they did. Home Sweet Home. Yeah. Everybody just for one year just kept requesting it as the number one. That was a good video, though. All right, back to UFOs. Um, I know you guys around, some of you around my age. So, hey, a little, what do they call that? Nostalgia. Never hurt anybody. Um, here we go. Where the original, no. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Into Thin Air. Oh, shit, I forgot. They got a video. Wow. Today I had something happen with the internet. It was bizarre. Oh, here, look at this. A media exploded over North Carolina. Ohio meteor tsunami buoy activated David buoy. Oh, this one is five minutes and 21 seconds into thin air we usually do into thin air at the top of the hour my bad five four three two at gush go <laughs> yeah Good morning, everybody. It is February 15th, 2023. Quick video for you. I want to go over a few things that happened overnight and actually this morning. You're looking at the trajectory of a crazy looking meteor that streaked across the skies, basically from the Pennsylvania border through Ohio towards that southwestern edge of Lake Erie. Now we have video of this which I'm playing right now, and take a look at this area. This might be the moon right here and some weird light or a reflection of the moon, but the meteor goes right past it. An unbelievable shot there and then fades out into the sky. And then we got the close-up. I'm not sure if this is the moon and then you get that reverse reflection of the moon there. I did check the moon phases. It does look like the moon is correct, but what a shot there by Ryan O'Connor, who has uploaded this to the American Meteor Society website. That's a very cool. nice fireball. Now, it's very intriguing to see these two lights here with the moon i'm assuming again this is just a reverse reflection of the moon that nope. happens on camera sometimes nope but nonetheless the focus should be on the meteorite itself i'm not Street sure light. if this thing yep. hit the ground or anything of that nature but, but it's not awesome video by ryan now moving on we have had some sort of boom a meteor explosion something has taken place in north carolina closer to the area of Merritt, north carolina but i'm going to scroll down here and you tell me what you think we've seen this in the past take a look at this seismogram right here something definitely took place it's almost as if there was a pre-shock a main explosion or main sonic boom, possible earthquake, and then almost two secondary shakes afterward. Throughout a 20-minute period, and then from 1305 to 1310, we see the highest peak of what these people are reporting. And as we scroll down further, we see 36 reports. So this is no joke. This took place. This happened. Something went down near the coastal area of North Carolina. I'm going to leave the description box here for you guys to read some of these descriptions. And again, this screen meteor explosion.
explosion to me. I don't think this was an earthquake. It has not been confirmed on the USGS, and it's within a tight, compact area, which leads me to believe that rather than an earthquake that has more of a spread specifically in those areas, you would feel it way spread out. We'd have many more reports. This was more of a condensed area, and this has meteor written all over it. Again, I'll leave the link for you guys to check that out. Also, no surprise here, we have a buoy going off off the northeast of the United States. It's a little bit off the northeast, pretty far, and not too much of a shake. It almost looks like a little jolt. These things can be set off by marine life or if they're hit by a boat. But if we go into the details here, you could see it drop down a little bit right here. More detail in this area. So not even a full meter of dip that caused this thing to trigger. These are very sensitive buoys, so we've had situations where sharks will come up and play with these things and set them off, but... I don't think this is anything to worry about. It may be a malfunction, but nonetheless, we've seen this exact buoy go off multiple times. So I don't know if it's a very sensitive buoy or if it's in an area where the ground underneath it's it is moving currently. It's a very sensitive currently. buoy. Your it doesn't like cold water. Mine with what's going on here, specifically because it was not a huge dip like we've seen in the past, where we uh, see 100-meter drops or rises, any of those weird anomalies that we've caught exactly in this area between these three buoys right here. Up, now, up, I want up, you to take up, a look at something very quickly here before I let you guys um, go, and I'm sure many of oh, you wait, are going to know back. exactly what's... Hold on. Did you see this? Look at the chemtrails here. You want to know why? You want to know why they're here? I'll tell you why. From the airport. It's where the planes go. They take off. But then I see it down here too. This is weird. You see this? I know these are maybe wispy old chem, but these are chemtrails. go and i'm sure many of you are going to know exactly what's going on here but take a look at this area of the southeast as we move forward into current time and take a look at the pattern of lines oh, you begin to see i didn't here. even watch Again, this i'm yet. not going to say anything you're going to know exactly what's going on but take a look at this stuff here this is just hey let me tell you something i have pictures of the chemtrails over florida the last couple of weeks and you know, it's humid here no matter what day it is. You know, usually it's 40% or higher. But there's been times where it go weeks without seeing a chemtrail and it rained the day before, the day after, humidity's everywhere, and there's no trails. I'm getting some activity that does not, it does not make sense. It does not, hey, a little bit of a reach. All right, finish. Just absolutely insane. We got them all nah. over the southern ends of he Georgia. doesn't want to say it. We got Mississippi involved in it right baby. off the coast here, the panhandle. We'll finish off into current time, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. For those of you that think I don't know what's going on, it does not get more obvious. Do you know, hello, hello, do you know why this is happening? Oh, I can't, oh, man, I can't wait to show you. This is... This is weather control. They're controlling the weather. They're controlling this front right here. People, my good friends. Yes, than that, my friends. You got to be careful about what you talk about here on this platform. But they are either pulling the storm or pushing it or killing it. Because in Arizona... I have very, very, very uh, good evidence that chemtrails in Arizona, when they were used, were to control the storms, the monsoon season, so they weren't so violent. You would see the storms building up over the mountains like they would every day in the summer, and then the chemtrails go right where the anvil breaks on the thunderheads, and the storms would just disintegrate. The, the, the storm cell, the energy would still travel. We'd get a dust storm and a sprinkle of rain, maybe a little lightning. But as the storm passes our, you know, the Phoenix, greater Phoenix area and gets to the outskirts, those storms build up again. And then we're watching them like, I can't believe how violent that storm just turned. Look at that. That is amazing. The lightning. Oh, my God. They have tornado warning. I was, you know, I have it synced up with the weather channel's radar and uh 
and the video I have of them chemtrailing. It was weird back in 2004 and 5, especially those two years. In 2006, they, they must have changed how they, they spray the trails. They weren't as low as they used to be, and um, the trails look different. They look beefier, but they were thinner. It's very strange. I've shown you my chem, my chem trail, but not all of them, obviously, but very strange stuff going on. Good video from Into Thin Air. I enjoyed that one. The link to all the videos I play here go into the show description at the end. You know, it takes about 10 minutes to get it in after the show, and then it loads up. It takes some time, um, but I... I Try to get them in there every show. Sometimes I'll miss one or two shows here, but I, uh, I go back and I put them in. All right. Um, I was going to, there was something I was going to, to, to do. Russian submarine almost collides with alien spacecraft underwater? This got to be a short or something. Yeah, this is good. Watch this. I, this is, I like this. This to me really happened. Oh, let me get rid of that. And uh, let me say thank you to you. Thank you to uh, all patron members and Goofon members. And uh, I know there may be some names that haven't been updated. I haven't updated it in a week, but. Um, don't get mad if you don't see your name and you're a member. Yeah, so, all right. Uh, what am I doing? Playing this video. God, all right, here we go. A gush. A Russian nuclear sub encountered a formation of what appeared to be alien spacecraft at depth under the water. At a depth of approximately 260 meters, crew aboard a fully weaponized Russian nuclear submarine detect six unknown objects on their sonar. What's even more alarming is the speed at which the objects are traveling, in excess of 265 miles per hour. The captain, fearing that a collision was imminent and that he was under attack, ordered an emergency surfacing of the submarine. The submarine finally breaches the surface, nah, narrowly avoiding a collision. But what happens next is even more astonishing. Six objects come out of the water. That's cool. And take off at some absurdly fast speed. One can only speculate about the intent of these USOs. Was this a hostile act of some sort, or were they just fleeing detection? A Russian nuclear sub. The objects were going 250 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, you see, Whirl Omar, that's the thing, my friend. Watch. Those are just cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds don't show up in straight lines for 100 miles. Fortunately, I was studying to be a meteorologist when I was in school. Yes, I know. I'm a jack of many trades. That's right. I never went through with it. But a meteorologist, of course. But let me show, I need to show you something. Let me show you something. Can I do that? All right. I'm going to show um, Whirl Omar something, not because you don't believe in it, but other people don't believe in chemtrails. I'm going to show you something here. Let me get it pulled up so I can show you here. This will be good. Some of you may know where I'm going. Actually, I want, let me show you something real quick. This, this is fun. There's not going to be any sound, but I will tell you what they're saying. Check this out. Where is it? Oh, hold on. Open. Oh. That was weird. There, here it is. This is when I, I first 
got nutty about them. Look at the size of that. That is huge. Yeah, that's just cirrus clouds right there. This is not what I'm showing you, though, World Omar. But those are just cirrus clouds, guys. All cirrus clouds have little loops that look like that and looks like a rope chain. Of course, that's cirrus clouds. And, and I, oh, look at this. Watch this part I'm going to show you. Oh, shit. Let me go back. This is very interesting. Ah, your mother's got two nicks. See this here? Look at this. Look at how it's twisting. See it? It's twisting underneath like it's coming apart or something. It's not that clear on here, but I promise you that that is twisting and turning. It is bizarre. This is the propulsion of whatever ship that was. And it would sound something like this. Right? But faster. Pushing it, propelling it. That's propulsion of, that's a plasma propelled airplane. <laughs> I don't know. Big chemtrails. But that's not what I wanted to show, Omar. That is not what I wanted to show, Omar. Where are you? Let me pull this up for Omar. Don't you go anywhere, Omar. We got to show you something. And you're going to like it. And you're going to love it. <laughs> and you're not going to believe. Let me get this for you here, Chief. All right. No, uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, you need to see this. Chemtrails are not real. No. But I'm going to prove it to you that they are real right now on this show. I am going to prove it to, to you and the world. Yeah. That it's real. Chemtrails are real. I'm trying to look uh, for the video. And um, here it is. I'm going to play this. Now, there's no sound, but I'm going to tell you what they're saying, okay? There is sound, but I can't get it to play for you for some reason. Here it is. The same substance that is used to make diapers, says the news guy. Substance used to make diapers. Could it help prevent hurricanes from being bigger? That's what a something businessman seems to think. He owns a company that makes environmental stuff. All we have to do is fill up 10 747s with the stuff called Dynagel that is used in diapers to absorb moisture. Listen, what? See? Dynagel, and then release it in a hurricane. They're hoping that the federal government will come up with about $50 million, which he says is just a, a fraction of what it would cost to, uh, for the insurance companies to clean up Hurricane Katrina and on the other hurricane. If you fill them up with Dynagel, it'll slow down or smooth out the, pass the uh, passage of a hurricane. Right? Look, it's amazing. There it is. And that's what, look at this, huh? I mean, that's different type of nozzle that they're using for, you know, this is just a demonstration, but. So chemtrails aren't real? It was on the news. Yeah. They're real, friends. That was, a, you know, Ron, uh, John Hook, or that guy you just saw, is the weatherman for Phoenix. Whatever, I forget his name. I think it was John Hook when he was young. What am I looking for? But I, I had to show Omar that, you know. It's proof. Jim Davidson throwing down some love. A continuing supporter of Goofon. 
Man, you're going for the record. Thank you very much, man. Major Gusto Mucho whatever so. What what is it? What? Mucho Gusto Generoso. Jim Davison. J Davidson. <sighs> Throwing down some love. Thank you. I know. Mucho Gusto Generoso. Appreciate it. Hey, Magnolia V12, long time no seesaw. How you been? Good to see you. XJ, new to the show here. Nice to meet you. Hey, Ragin, against the machine. But no the, the, or the, the. Arrows Andy is here. Yeah, I leave a chemtrail after a fall curry? A foul curry? I'm not sure what that meant. Hey, Andrea Coran throws down $2, and you are a continuing supporter of Goofon as well. Mucho gusto, Generoso. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. And um, I was just, I don't know what I was going to say, Andrea. I can't remember. But thank you very much. What time is it? 8.47. All right, let's see. Mucho gusto, generoso, Andrea Coran. All right, let's see. You guys have sent me some stuff here. Oh, uh, Greer, by the way. Greer. Nope, there's nothing to talk about. Nothing about Greer to talk about. Nope. All right, here we go. I've got a few more things I want to play. This next clip is Kamala Harris. Can I just show, can we get a little bit political at least? Have some fun? This isn't bad. It just shows the, uh, the, uh, the brain that the brains of this administration. That's why I like it. I like to play these. Here we go. Next clip is uh, Kamala Harris, and she's uh, really put herself in a box because she's trying to quote from this very, very important ah. phrase from the Declaration of Independence. Just tends to leave one little detail out. That we are each Hold on. endowed Look at her with the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We are each endowed. Uh, I mean, who talks this way? I added the duh. Yeah, she left something out because what I'm it says sorry. in the Declaration of Independence is that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. She left that out. And are endowed, that part she's Thank right, you. but she missed this part, oh. by their creator oh, that's right. with certain unalienable rights, the right to life, Isn't that amazing? liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. She conveniently on the day of the March for Life, forgot to say. That's amazing. We have a right to Wow, that's crazy. She's just so bizarre. She's so weird. Ugh. I get the, like, you know, I feel like cooties. No, no, I'm not kidding when I watch these people. Magnolia V, one, two, five dollars, says... Wife still has the bread. Oh, no way. Ask Cousins Brothers, how's breakfast? Breakfast is fantastic. The, the dog is nine. And, uh, you know, they were away for a little bit, almost two months. And uh, the mother, their mother watches the dog. And breakfast is uh, as good as he could be. He's doing really, really good, actually. They, they were surprised how good he is for his age. Something like that. Yeah, it's nice. Dog's a cool dog, man. Thank you for the $5. I'll let them know and hope, you know, maybe they're watching. Sometimes they watch. Thank you very much, Magnolia V12. Good to see you, too. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Wait, what's this? Who's cringe? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. When... She's the smart one. Who, Pelosi? <laughs> There's something I have. I have something that's 
getting to my brain that I don't control anymore. Um, government bewildered UFO crash retrieval. All right, let's see what this is. Oh, this is the uh, third phase of moon from last night. Oh my God, that's right. They had the video. They have a new one. This is good. Actually, this is great. Yes, this is very, very good. This video, I'm so excited I found it. Here we go. Third phase of moon, everybody. In five, four, three, two, and a gush. Thanks. Now that this cow is out of the barn, uh, the president and the director of national intelligence needs to address it. Uh, they need to explain to the American people if they know, and I'm not sure they know, if they know they're not telling us uh, what these things are, who put them up there, and do they pose a threat to the American people? And if the answer is no, how do they know that? <laughs> you, um, what's your assessment? Do you feel like there's a threat? Le learning what you've just learned, do you feel like the threat level is low or The only thing I feel confident saying right now is that um, if you are confused, you understand the situation perfectly. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins, and we're going over the breaking news events as it continues on a daily basis reaction from the senate didn't really learn a darn thing did you get any answers as to what those other objects were not at all not at all, not at all. there right. ought to be more transparency whether it's from the president in a national address or through some other senior official the american people need and deserve more facts in real time not months later but right now you know, I think it is time for the president to address the nation. This is when we need to have an Oval Office address. And he needs to say, this is what we know. This is what we're doing. Is the president of the United States going to come forward in, in regards to what's really going on? When is the official word coming from the top? Are they lost? Are they, is the they are lost. Right? They can't find them. The, the remnants are in very difficult terrain, low temperatures, uh, lots of inclement weather, and they're looking, but they haven't been able to find them, except for these five months. As we stated moments ago on our past few episodes, where is the wreckage, the debris from the unknown objects being shot down? Will we ever see them given to the public? When you, you say there, the there's the many... Address the nation. Well, I, I, I think that given where we are and the impression that that this is some sort of uh, circumstances that, that's happened in the last couple of weeks i think at, at a minimum our director of, of national intelligence uh should should go in front of the american people and explain what we know what we don't know without without uh divulging any classified information but this it's clear to me this is not a recent recent uh, phenomenon. Now senators in the United States are now saying that the UFO is a phenomenon and it's been going on for years now with no explanation to the public. But Americans are worried, they're concerned, they're interested, and they have a right to know why President Biden directed the actions he did over the last week. So I urge once again President Biden to come today, speak directly on camera to the American people just as past presidents have in, in similar moments, like Ronald Reagan explained what happened when Soviet Russia shot down a Korean Airlines flight in 1983, like George Bush spoke to the American people after Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in 1990. President Biden needs to explain to the American people why he has been doing what he's been doing. Still awaiting the statements from the president at the Oval Office. Will it be happening anytime soon? And why do you think the administration waited until now to start bringing this to light? I don't this know. Has been happening? I don't know. Roger Marshall said he feels it's like a fear mongering. It's intentional fear mongering. I don't sure. know. I don't know. I just know that that go going into this, the last two hearings, I had the impression that this was uh, uh, something that that had happened over the last two weeks, and that, that's not accurate. This has been going on a long time. Do they give an explanation as to why they're shooting them down now? Why nope, they're deciding? They did not. 
Yeah, some are saying that it's a wagging of the dog to improve approval ratings. I don't care to speculate on that. I, I just know that uh, um, we need some more transparency. I understand the need for, for national security secrets, but uh, now that this cow is out of the barn, uh, the president and the director of national intelligence needs to address it. As you heard from the senator, the cow is out of the barn. Those statements are provocative. Mm. Is the UFO cover-up about to be broken wide open? I highly doubt it. It seems to me that they're going to continue to keep this top secret national security level. Let, let me emphasize. Let me say it again. This has been going on for a long time. Um... <laughs> We, we know some of the objects, others we think we probably missed, and we don't know what most of them are. So bottom line is kind of walking away from this thing, still having a lot of questions. Yes, yes. We have, we have unity and confusion. The confusion continues, but what's interesting is the pilot's testimony who shot down these unidentified Rodrigo. objects we have obtained from the drive. Good to see you. They've got the audio from the F-22 pilots in regards to what they encountered in the sky. It's a little fuzzy, the audio, but this is best as we got right now. Listen closely to this. Oh, I went home to land. I don't even know what. I couldn't see anything that says hello. I couldn't see it outside my eyes. It definitely looks like something, uh, there's uh, some kind of object that's suspended in the air. It's hard to tell. It's pretty small. I cannot see it outside of my eyes. One, one, and then a target is hot. You can see something. I can't tell if it's metallic or what. And there's, uh, I can see like Metallica. Down below, but I can't see below it. Give me fuel. One, give me one, fire. The outside is kind of like uh, a blackish. Give me double charge. I can't really tell, though, what the shape is. It's going to you can't see it until you're so close. I'd honestly be worried about hitting it before you know it. It's almost like a octagonist shape. I'm going to call it a balloon. You can definitely see strings hanging down below, but I don't see anything below it. It's pretty small. I don't know, size of like a, a balloon or something. They don't know what it is. We've enhanced the audio. I put some denoiser in there so we can hear a little bit better of what the pilots are saying. Here's some of the some of the stuff that stood out. Basically, dark blackish container with three to four lines hanging down, but nothing suspended from it. Nope. As we listen a little closer, it says it's causing static. Huh? That's interesting. Is this some kind of propulsion system? Some kind of static coming from the from these meta uh, lines hanging down from this blackish container. One pilot could hear. But that's I guess racist. They didn't transmit. Uh, <laughs> they said it wasn't tracking on radar, and it was smaller than a car, about the size of a four wheeler. Reflects a glint from the sun, and uh, it's hard to tell. But again, What's it's this? like our oh, that's documentaries on the video. above top secret and countdown to disclosure. The posters match perfectly, resembling what's Crazy. happening today. What are the they odds? came out with these posters couple years ago countdown to disclosure is about three years old above top secret last year the biggest documentaries on amazon prime and now we came up with the concept with the for latest documentary ufo endgame to disclosure a few months ago but then once again are we going to be seeing what's uh, represented in our poster for the upcoming documentary ufo endgame to disclosure coming out march 14th an object over the White House? You never know, but we've got more UFO sightings just since the third phase of moon. So guys, take a look at this. Y de repente se apaga. Entonces hace rato se encendió cañón, ¿no? Y luego solo. Es luz roja lo que vemos. 
This is interesting. That's a wait a second. Se ve como como una bola. Qué bueno que no está temblando el pulso. What? Isis sonó como a drone. Isis, watch your mouth. Justo antes de que escucha el swoosh metálico. Hey, Rich. Hey, honey. 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 Hey, you know, it's no sonido de barn. Out behind the barn. See that object that showed up right there? Hold on. Did you see it? Sounds like the ghost video. Did you see it? When Jonathan passes around the orb, unbeknownst to him, there seems to be another orb right here. I can actually see it right there. Something should pop up above it. See? Yeah. That looks like it's the phone. That orb. Yeah. Oh, I see what happened. The object got bright. Actually, it's interesting. Right? Isn't that what just happened? The object got bright and it created the light, that ball, from his phone. Here's an object down here. Let's take a look at this again. It's, it's, uh, it's real. It looks like it's actually there. See that? Wow, this is weird. So what are we going to say? That's a drone now? It doesn't look like a drone to me, though. <laughs> I know, right? And he is. I mean, he's always been here. No sound. There's sound. Oh, good. Uh, let's see, yep, it did get bright. That looks like a drone. Yeah, I think this is a drone. Actually, it's interesting. Recently, Mexico has no. had their own... And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why real quick. You know, you guys know I have a drone. And, uh, I, you know, I put a light on it. And... It looked nothing like this. Nothing like it. You can easily see the drone. There's no question it's a drone. I don't know. This looks like it's in focus for the most part. It's a weird video. Let me just hear what the guys are saying about it. We're going a little over time for tonight. I know some people can't wait. They got to go, but here we go. UFO sightings are the military jets over there going to start engaging and shooting out UFOs? I'm not exactly, exactly sure, David. but right now this luminescent orb uh, seems a little too bright to be a drone to me. Yeah, Unless it's some kind of new drone that I'm not aware of. Uh, it. They don't get that bright. It's bright as the sun sometimes, but nah, I don't know. That, that's not a drone. I'm telling you, right to left, and then just I don't think it's a drone. Static kids. over there. That resembles some drone maneuvers, but then again, the luminance I don't know of light coming off of this thing. It pops. Yeah, what exactly. Here. Yeah, I like this. Well, I'm going to definitely rule out that this is CG. And and it gets dimmer. Like really like I uh, to have a drone light get dimmer, go brighter. I you know, that those aren't just found in the stores. There there are none that can do that. Unless you customize it and you have a very good drone, a powerful one. And it could be a small flashlight or something that has a hell of a lot of lumens, <laughs> right? It could be that. It could be. Can't count it out because it does move. And Blake said it. So don't get on him. He said it moves like a drone. He did. Hi, whatever we're looking at is real. You can see this light's pretty yeah, it's far real. off in the distance. And to create that uh, beam of light so luminescent is, uh, would take quite a bit of energy. Again, could this just be some sort of phenomena, a plasmic ball, some sort of static electricity ball that's just floating in the sky? Or is this some sort of 
a new drone of propulsion, something we're not familiar with, a phenomenon. Absolutely, a pretty stunning capture. Again, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but I'm gonna roll out helicopter or airplane and uh, the way this thing maneuvered and look at that, it's so bright. It's hard to make out. Exactly That's weird, man. What's going on here? This is definitely a UFO, in my opinion. But. Where's the end of the video? Why stop recording history? I'm going to say this now, and I'm not happy about it. But I, I have a good feeling, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is a drone. I do. Because of the, the factors. No sound. Very short video. It moves like a drone. And we all know part of the saying, if it looks like a drone, acts like a drone, it's a duck. Yep. Well, that's it for tonight. I want to thank every single person who came here tonight. Thank you for that support. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I really do. It's the best gift of all. Just to know that you guys want to spend a little a little bit of time here. It's just beautiful. All right. And I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. It is our slow night of the week for some reason. So make sure you're here. I'll be on time. And uh, I am. Uh, I think I'm going to have the videos ready for tomorrow, my videos. What I wanna do, I wanna, I wanna connect the video to the show and I wanna play things in real time. I don't wanna edit. I wanna, if I'm on the show, I wanna fast forward it and we all watch it. That's what I bought, something that we could do and watch it at, you know, in real time. It will be so much fun watching those videos from 15, 18 years ago, 19 years ago. It's going to be weird, but man, I can't wait to share it. And we're there. We should have it tomorrow. Um, but thanks again, newcomers and veterans for the support, super chatters, everything, man. Thanks again. You know, we try to do everything the right way here. No matter what, we're going to make mistakes. I am uh, very opinionative. Doesn't mean I don't I know, I know I'm not right on everything, but with this, now that I've looked into it a little further tonight, watched some videos, listened to some other people, read your comments and opinions, this is uh, some sort of, it's, I don't, I don't want to say PSYOP, but the fact that they're purposely not saying UFO, and they're just saying objects, and then, you know, the cylindrical and the octopus, the octagon shape, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not to have anything in our hands, not to have even found any debris yet, is suspect. And, uh, you know, we try to do the best thing here, and that's truth. <laughs> ah. Truthology for <laughs> ufology. Yeah. All right. That's it for tonight. And uh, thank you, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Amy is tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., Alien Girl 111, 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. I am probably going to be on Rebellious Unknown tomorrow with Caitlin, Lynn, and Dave again, I think. But I'll see how I feel. I may, I may just do an hour. I don't know yet. But I was invited to go back on, and I think I want to. So tomorrow should be fun. All right. See you guys. And alien bless. I said alien bless. Warning. Control. Life. Warning. Control, life, warning, unidentified flying objects.